In this video, we're going to solve the simplest short run macroeconomic model. So in this chapter, we've assumed that desired aggregate spending can be represented by this AE function, so aggregate expenditure function, and it's simply composed of two things, C plus I. So remember, C is desired consumption, and I is desired investment. So in this really simple model, there's no government, there's no exports or anything like that. And we've also assumed that both this C and this I have certain functional forms. That is, this consumption function of C equals A plus B times YD. And remember that this YD is just disposable income. And we've also assumed, so I'll just put a where here, C equals A plus B times YD. So remember, B is the marginal propensity to consume. And we've also assumed that I is just simply a constant. So it's I zero, let's say. So the first step we can do to solve, to solve this model is simply, so we'll just put one, plug in functional forms. So we just want to plug in these functional forms we have here. So this C and this I, we're going to plug these back into this AE function, and then we're just going to simplify. OK, so now we have AE equals A plus B times YD plus I0. All right, one thing we know is that YD just equals Y here because there's no government, so there's no taxes, so all the money you earn, you don't pay any tax on that, it's all disposable income, because no government. So now we're just left with AE equals A plus I zero plus B times Y. And so a lot of times you'll see Anything that's you know not multiplied by y, so here the a and the and the i zero, we're going to denote that a, and that's just going to be desired autonomous spending. And so when we say autonomous, all it's saying is it doesn't rely on the income, like you know this term here relies on income since it's you know there's a multiplied by y. This a and this i zero are not multiplied by y. So they're going to, no matter what the level of national income, that's going to be a level of desired aggregate expenditure. OK, so we can simply write this AE equals capital A plus BY. All right, so now this looks nice and simple. We can move on to our next step. So our next step is simply to invoke our equilibrium condition. condition. And so remember from the text, our equilibrium condition is that our desired aggregate expenditure is equal to our actual. So y here is the actual. So desired equals the actual. It's the only time we can be in equilibrium. OK, so we have our equilibrium condition. So let's just rewrite it again. And I'm just going to say y equals ae. So it'll be a little easier to work with here. And now we just want to plug in what we know about this AE function. So we just solve for it. So you want to plug this in. We want to plug AE equals capital A plus B times Y. We're going to plug it into the right hand side. So now we have Y equals A plus B times Y. Now we want to just solve for the Y. So we got to move this over. So now we have Y minus B times Y equals A. We have a common factor, so we can take that out. Y times 1 minus B, that's the same thing as the previous line, equals A. We can divide both sides by 1 minus B, and we're left with Y equals A over 1 minus B. And if we want to plug in what that capital A equals to, is equal to, it's equal to you know, 
uh, little a plus i zero. So now an alternative way of representing this would be through y equals a plus i zero over one minus b. So now we've solved this simplest short run macroeconomic model. So just like many aspects of our course, now that we've solved it algebraically, let's you know let's graph this out and see what it looks like. Okay, so let's jar axes here. We have aggregate expenditure on this axis. We have y on this axis. So now we want to put our equilibrium condition in, and our equilibrium condition is simply a 45 degree line. So let's say this is 45 degrees, and this is y equals ae. So this is our equilibrium condition because at every point along this line, y equals ae. Then what we need to do is draw our aggregate expenditure function. So if we remember from our um, from our functional forms, we have a certain level of autonomous aggregate expenditure. So this capital A. So remember if we scroll up here, our capital A, let's just make it clear what I'm talking about. Let's you know pick a different color here. Okay. So I'm talking about this right here. We want to graph this as well on the graph. And we know that capital A equals A plus I zero. I know this is getting a little bit complicated, but bear with me. And so this intercept, this you know Y intercept here is capital A. I know. And another way to say this would be little A plus I zero, which equals this capital A. So that's our intercept, because no matter what the level of y, that's how much aggregate expenditure we have. And then we have a slope that's determined by, in this case, simply the marginal uh, propensity to consume, so b. Because b is the only thing that's affecting the slope of this function. And this is our ae function. Now what we're doing when we do this you know, this algebra up above is we're drawing, you know, we're figuring out where these two lines intercept here. So we're invoking this equilibrium condition. We're saying the functional form of this, and we have the slope and the intercept, and we're seeing where these two cross, just like in our math review. And where those two things cross is just what our result is. So that's at y equals a over one minus b. So I know right now it seems really convoluted and maybe complicated and very theoretical, this model, but it's really important that you understand um, how to calculate, you know, how to go through these steps and how to calculate equilibrium. Because in the next couple chapters, what we're really doing is building on this model. We're just going to add, you know, layers of complication to it and see how that affects the model. Because we're trying to get it a little bit more like real life. Okay, so, I mean, th the steps we just got to remember are just you know, writing out what it, what's ever in our aggregate expenditure function, um, plugging in whatever our functional forms are, invoking our equilibrium condition, and then just graph, you know, solving for y and graphing out our functions.